So I thought in this video, I'd try my hand at a bit of car photography. I've come out with my main man, Aiden, who's helping me doing the filming at the minute. It's something that I've been meaning to give a go for a little while now, and I just wanted to kind of have a little practice, really. I've got no supercar, unfortunately, to use for this shoot, but what I do have, and what hasn't scrubbed up too bad, is my little Mini Cooper Sport. So for the shoot, I've just come down to this little spot near me. Um, it's just this little lane up to kind of like a farmhouse thing. I spotted it the other day. Time the shoot to come down here at sunset. So I've just taken a couple of shots with the sun on the horizon in the background there. And the remainder of these shots are all gonna be from now on. So just sort of this short period of blue hour. The settings I'm at at the moment are F2.8, ISO 100. And at the moment I'm at sort of around 320, 250ths of a second which I know is underexposed in the images by a fair bit, but my plan is to, to bring all those shadows back in post. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of expose for the, the sky, and like I say, bring the car and the shadows back in Lightroom. That's the plan anyway. But I'm gonna shut up now and get a few shots. see also that I've got the camera at around kind of bumper height of the car. I'm also going to try a shot using the Brenizer method. So I'm going to get a shot of the car at 2.8 and I'm going to get two shots either side of the car and stitch them together in Lightroom. What I'm also going to do now is just generally move around the car and get some close-up detail shots. So what I'll do now is give you a real quick run through on how I edited those images and I'll do it on that Brenizer method image just so that you kind of learn how to stitch some images together in Lightroom and how to do the editing, kind of two for the price of one. So jumping into Lightroom, here's our three images that I took on a tripod. The reason I've done that, I just wanted to make sure that they lined up pretty well. I mean, you could do this by hand, but I guess it helps if you're using a tripod. So here's obviously the main one of the car, then one slightly to the left, and one slightly to the right. So all we do is shift click and select those three images. Command click or right click if you're on a PC, whatever. Um, come up to photo merge, panorama. And I usually just leave it on perspective, hit merge. And this might take your machine a few minutes, you know, but it will basically then spit out this image where they're all nicely merged together which all we've got to do now is if we hit R, just crop this in, you know, until obviously it's, um, you know, you're missing those white bits where it's actually stitching them together. If we just enable profile corrections, I think that's probably going to help out as well. Yeah, there we go. Let's just go back up here, hit R again, just get into that menu again, come back to the angle bit. And yeah, I think we're, we're about there. Hit done. And then we're just going to go through and do the basic edits on the image. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I'll explain this in a minute, but I'm going to just drop the, I know it's kind of really underexposed, I'm going to drop the ex exposure down a little bit. I'm going to drop the highlights pretty much all the way down, the whites almost all the way down. And then I'm going to also, I know if I warm this up a little bit, because it was quite a warm sunset when I shot this, so believe it or not, there is actually, if we up the saturation a little bit as well, there is actually quite a lot of orange in that sky, which you can't really see on the original image. If I just do a quick before and after. I'll come back and do some more edits there in a minute. 
but for the minute let's get a radial gradient going on and let's just draw a pretty kind of big oval over the car and basically all we're going to be doing is obviously raising the exposure up and the shadows so that the car kind of becomes obviously the focal point of the image. Let's hit done there. And then what I found was actually raising up the dehaze by a fair whack really does transform the image quite a lot. So that if I do like a quick before and after now, you can see it's, it's really starting to come together now. Let's also add a little bit of clarity in as well. Let's just add a tiny bit of texture. Something else I've just spotted is bugging me. I'm going to fix it now quickly. Obviously, there's a bit of dust or crap on my sensor. I'm just going to do a big healing brush over that. Should fix that. And it's also reminded me that I need to clean my sensor. Also, look, I've, not, I've just seen there's a little bit of the uh, white space up there. So I'm just going to bring that crop in ever so slightly just to miss, to miss that part now. There we go. Okay, next thing we're going to do is add a linear gradient. And you'll see a lot of people do this in car photography. If you just drag this up from the bottom of the image, and all we're going to do on this one pretty much is just drop the exposure down. Just sort of darkening the foreground, I think, just helps draw your eye up to the actual car itself. And really, I mean, we're not too far away now. I mean, that was the, the main portion of the edit that I was doing. I did also just bring the, the hue of the greens to a slightly warmer hue and also raise the green luminance a little bit. And again, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back, just drop that exposure down ever so slightly more as well for the whole image. because I quite like the sort of moodiness and I'm going to go back into the, this is what I find I sort of go back and forth a little bit you know go back to the radial one and then maybe just raise the exposure of the car a little bit more and the shadows just to sort of darken the background a little bit more and just again bring more focus to the car you know and yeah I'm pretty happy with that already if I show you a quick before and after I think that's come on a fair way like you know with just a, a sort of a few simple edits really so far. Let's also, if I zoom in to 200%, you'll also get an idea of how much noise is going on in this image. You know, what did I shoot this image at? Um, 50 mil, 2.8, one one hundredth of a second, and the ISO is only at 100, you know? So I've obviously, I've tried to keep the image as clean as possible, but we can clean it up a little bit just with a little bit of noise reduction as well. And I found, I think I'm too mad with this. I think I brought it up to, 20 odd, something like that. Let's have a little on and off, yeah. So you can see, like, it's not going too, I know sometimes if you go too mad with the noise reduction, it can give a bit of a sort of weird effect. So yeah, that's that's working out okay. And then what we're also gonna do is, is crank the sharpening up, which you might be thinking, right, that's way too much, because it's gonna show, it's almost gonna sharpen like any sort of noise left in the bonnet and stuff. But what we're going to do now is if you hold down ALT and drag that mask up, basically all those white areas, it's now going to mask, it's only going to sharpen those white areas, just the edges and the bits that we actually want sharpened. So, I mean, that can come kind of right up there. And so now, if I just click on and off the sharpening and the, and the noise reduction, you can now see that working quite well. So let's zoom out again. And I think the only other thing I'm gonna do at this point is just add a little S curve in. Little tip here for the curves. If you hold down Alt when you're adding your points in, the, the line won't sort of move around. I don't know if you've noticed that. You know a lot of time when you click on that line, it sort of it, it moves around a little bit. If you hold down Alt, it kind of it kind of makes sure that the points just, that the, the line stays where it is. So it's just, just a little tip. Anyway. It's, um, like I say, just a, a bit of a subtle S-curve, just to get a little bit more contrast in there, maybe just raise those blacks ever so slightly. I, do, I don't want to go too mad with that faded black look, you know, but 
just raise them ever so slightly and drop that white one down just to just to mute those highlights ever so slightly another little before and after and yeah that's generally the the process of how i was editing all of those car images something else to note and something that i've learned from doing this little shoot with the mini is that basically the car is like one big fucking mirror and it's going to reflect everything around it so you'll see that's the only bit i didn't like about this this shot like you know i thought i thought well, most of these shots come out fairly well but you'll notice down this side of the car it's reflecting a parked car that's parked out on the main road and a tree here which i didn't really notice too much while i was shooting to be honest i mean and i did I, you know in the edited picture i mean i did fix these a little bit i just got the healing brush i'll, I'll give you a quick i'm not going to do a, a brilliant job of doing this but i did do like a bit of a healing brush over the car and just kind of cloned a, a section of the door down here and then i think i did i did the same as well with this sort of tree trunk bit up here So, you know, I mean, I'm only doing like a real quick just to show you how, you know, you can tidy it up. And again, you know, if I took this into Photoshop, I've no doubt I could sort that car door out and get it looking a lot cleaner than what it is. But it's definitely something to note and something that I'm making a note of for the future is that, you know, I'm going to probably angle the car or just take more note of what's being reflected in the car before I start going crazy and taking all the shots and stuff, you know. So just something for you guys to bear in mind. But anyway, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned a few little tricks there. It's something that I think I'm going to go out, head out and do, take some more car photography of, you know, like some of my mates have got some nice fancy sports cars and stuff. So I think I'll probably tap a few of them up and, and go out and do a few little shoots. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, please do think about liking and subscribing as well. That would be amazing. And I will see you again in the next one. Cheers.